Hey everybody, I've got a new filter today for an old lens, this old Carl Zeissian Eflectagon. I've been kind of restoring for a while. The filter is this one, it's the K&F Concept Circular Polarizer Filter. And uh, these filters, uh, polarizer filters, are useful and they're fun as well. And they're really interesting. They stop reflections on non-metallic surfaces, surfaces like glass, water, um, wood, some plastics. Not all plastics, but it does work on some plastics. It increases saturation and it even makes skies look more vivid. Generally, a filter like this gives a unique look. Well, let's take it out of the box. I guess this must be what they call an unboxing, given that the product is in the box. It's not easy to get out. It's all made from nice materials. Uh, the actual metal parts of the filter are aerospace metal, which I think must be uh, magnesium aluminium alloy. Um, and the great thing about this lens, the unique selling point, is that everything goes together magnetically. So the cap comes off magnetically, sticks on there magnetically, and the filter itself sticks onto the mounting ring magnetically as well. So it'll just pull off the mount ring really easy, and the mount ring is the bit that screws into the camera. So what you do is to mount the filter, clip it on there, and make sure it's seated right, and then you can turn it. And you'll need to turn it to make it do its thing to stop reflections. So one position we're polarized, and then we'll turn it, and now we're not polarized. So it's really, really easy to use. Um, and it all comes apart nice and easy. There are no, there's, so there's no fiddling about with, you know, tabs on plastic lens caps, which is, I always find very fiddly. We've got multi-layer coating on here. This is a coated filter, so it's protected uh, in that sense. It's not an uncoated filter that light's just going to get distorted by. It's got a good strong coating there, and you can probably see it. It's blue in colour, and it works not really well. Now, how this thing works is really interesting. How polarization works is really interesting. And as I understand it, this is how it works. So the light that comes from the sun, well, that's scattered. It's everywhere. One bit's flying over here, one bit's flying over here, another bit's flying up over here, another bit's flying off behind there. It's not coherent. It's scattered in many, 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 many different directions. Now when that falls on a reflective surface, that scattered light is what you see on an image. So, so a surface, surfaces reflect that scattered light through your lens into your camera and that's, that's what makes your image. You're making an image with scattered light. A polarizer makes the light coherent. It makes it all move in the same direction because what the polarizer has on it you're not going to see it here but somehow somewhere on that surface are many 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 probably thousands of tiny little lines so it's a little bit like a, a fence really or a gate you know if this is a ray of light and this is a gate well you know it's not going to get through if it's coming this way but if it's positioned this way, the ray of light is going to go boom, straight through there. And any other rays of light positioned that way, boink, there you go, straight through as well. Well, that's what's happening on this filter. When it's in the polarised position, only light of that particular direction comes through. So what that means is all the light's coherent that comes through it. It's all aligned in the same way and, and you don't see, importantly, you don't see on the image any of the scattered light or any reflections. So this lens is really good for stopping reflections on those surfaces, this filter, I should say. Now, when I realised KNF made this filter in 77mm size and I realised 
further that this front of this flectagon here is 77 mil. I put two and two together and decided I could mount this filter on here. I'm not going to use it just exclusively on this lens, but what I can do is use step up rings to mount it on other lenses, whereas I couldn't really use step down rings to use a smaller filter on bigger lenses, if that makes sense. So let's run through some pros and cons. Well, this thing firstly really does cut down reflection. If you turn this from non-polarised to polarised, uh, I was astonished to find that I could actually shoot an image of just randomly shooting. I shot an image of the sun reflected on a car window and I was astonished to find that this filter in the polarised position removed all the glare from around that reflection. Really quite astonishing and it just left the, the star itself visible. Really quite something. Um, so it really cuts down reflections. It allows you to, if you're shooting through, for example, glass or water, you can see through the glass more clearly, you can see under the water more clearly. Uh, and it really does boost saturation as well. And, and not in just the same way as the lens itself would. It does bring a character and a, and a vibrancy of its own to uh, images. It actually puts its own stamp on them and it has a really, uh, really nice look actually. I really do like this look uh, from this lens. It's very much more defined and uh, it gives real definition and some real punch and cuts down all those reflections that we usually see. And generally I think the images I've got from this lens, uh, from this filter rather, couldn't really have come from any other kind of photo making device. It really boosts saturation, it really wax up the saturation and generally just warms the image, makes it a little more richer, a little fuller, a little more full of, you know, energy and, and, and vigorous colour. It really brings those colours right up. So let's look at some cons of this filter. Well, it does cut down the light entering the camera. So I found that peaking didn't work as well. It wasn't as clear and it wasn't as prominent. It was there and I could use it. I did find that it was usable, but it's quite a bit reduced from how it would usually be in this camera. Um, and it slows the shutter speeds down as well. If you turn it to polarised position as it is now, this thing is going to slow your shutter speeds down. I found roughly by about a third or a half, something like that, depending on the light. So it does need very good light to work. Um, not really ideal for low light situations, does need to be well lit. Well, I had a lot of fun with this filter. I like playing with polarising filters and this one's really nicely made and it works really well as well. So if you're looking for a polarising filter, I guess this is a very nice one to consider. Okay, we have another box here and what could possibly be in here? Let's have a look. And this is actually genuinely the first time I have opened this. I've not actually, whoop, I've not actually opened this before. So here we are, let's see further what we've got going on here. You can probably already tell it is a tripod, but more than that, it's a very light tripod with a carbon fiber construction. All of these legs and pillars and posts are made from carbon fibre, very, very light, very, very strong material. 
So this really is quite something. You can see that the legs, we'll pull the legs out. And each leg has got, I think it's three, three positions that it can go to. Three predetermined positions. So that's one. So you can have all the legs flat and, you know, very stable on the floor. Keeps things short. There's the second position. And there's the third position. So those are released by pulling these little clips here. And that's how we move those back. Okay, so those two are in the same position now. And there we are, they're all now in the same position. Now one of these says on here, detachable monopod. So what happens is if we turn this leg, then we find that we've got something very useful, which is a monopod. So this uh, will screw into your camera and you can extend it to any length you want. And these will extend, I don't know how long they extend, but they do extend quite some way. That actually, I can't fit that on the screen from where I am. It's, it's what? Gosh, yes, that's from my fingertip to the middle of my arm there. So that really is quite high. So that's a really useful thing, a really, really useful thing, a, a, a monopod uh, that you can use if you don't need a tripod, you don't need to take, you know, a huge big thing, not that this is huge and big, but a bigger thing with you. You can take this just single um, monopod. This will steady your camera. Um, it's not freestanding, of course, like a tripod is, but it's, it's a really good steadying device. So it's really a nice part of the design that that is actually part of how this thing works. That's pretty cool. Now, because this is made of carbon fiber, it, it does end up very light. And the actual weight is uh, 1.55 kilograms. So just under two kilograms. And that's a really good, um, alternative to carrying around a great big heavy tripod. You really don't want to be carrying around a great big heavy tripod and indeed some people can't do that. So this is a great alternative. It's got a 30 millimeter ball head on it um, and it's really nicely made. This is very positionable. It's very easy to move. It's CNC machined. Uh, and everything feels very tight and good and well put together. There's a little lock to prevent the turning, rotating part rotating. So you can lock the pan. And there's a quick release plate on this tripod also, which is a really cool thing. So that makes it nice and easy to take off. So just quickly undo that, lift it off and very nice and easy to take off your camera. Screw underneath there, goes in the bottom of the camera. Quick release plate goes on there. One turn, literally one turn is all you need to get that on and off. So it's very, very quick. Um, it's very positionable. There's a lot of variation of position built into the tripod. We've got a sliding plate there. It's got a 12 kilogram load capacity. You can put a heavy, fairly heavy camera or a bit of kit on top of there. The great thing about this little tripod is its weight. It's very, very light, uh, certainly relatively speaking. It's, mm, is it heavier than a camera? Yeah, it's a bit heavier than a camera. So 12 kilogram load capacity, very, very adjustable, lots and lots of room for adjustments, both of position and of height. 
quick release plate for you know real ease of use and it's very light made of carbon fiber it weighs only 1.5 kilograms and <clears throat> i mean that's a godsend you, you you just don't want to be carrying a huge heavy tripod around with you all day and in fact some people can't carry a huge heavy tripod around with them every day so you know this thing really is uh, a, a, a boon to somebody who is looking for a really useful piece of kit at uh, a very low weight there is a little strap here to put on the bag you pop it over your shoulder and we've also got in the bag Ah, here we are, some instructions. I mean, I think I know how to use it, but let's take out the instructions. Just in case I've, uh, you know, made any mistakes. So there we are, nice, uh, nice instructions printed in Chinese and in English. This one's for the ball head. And this one is for the general rest of the tripod itself. So nice and simple, all clearly laid out, very graphically, very clear. Um, no, mystery about, no mystery about how to operate any of this. Um, very, very simple. So that's great. Well... This then, you know, this is a really nice piece of kit. When you want that steady shot, when you want a dead solid, dead steady shot, there are other ways to do it. You can pop your camera down on a convenient place. You can brace your arms against your rib cage, but there is no substitute for a really good tripod. This one is light, it's portable, and it's very, very capable. So there we are, two really nice pieces of kit from KNF. But as for me, that's it from me for now. Many, many thanks for watching. It's really appreciated. Thank you to subscribers for your continued subscriptions. That's really, really appreciated. And thank you also to patrons for your continued support. That is very, very much appreciated as well. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. And you can do that for just one dollar or from, I should say, just one dollar per month. So many, many thanks for watching, everybody. And if you're not doing anything too intense, too difficult, too vexing next week at this time, please do. Pull up a chair and join us for a little bit more xenography. Cheerio all.